number 38. My name is Mallory, otherwise known as Just a Dose of Love, all around the internet. So you can find me on Instagram, Reddit, Facebook, and Ravelry under Just a Dose of Love, and Etsy under A Dose of Love, though I am most active on Instagram. If you are a new viewer, this is a bi-weekly ish video podcast about knitting and crafts and kind of whatever else I happen to be making at the time. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming to spend some time with me today. I am very excited to show you what I've been up to, but first I am recording today in Edmonton, Alberta, where I live with my favorite feline, Sasika Sonia, Chris, and a snake named Heidi. It is December 5th, and it's about 1 o'clock p.m., so we are a week later recording than is normal. Um, it's, this is three weeks instead of two weeks, but here we are. <laughs> uh, and with kind of the intro out of the way, I would just like to start first because we are so close to the 100 subscriber mark. I do want to go through the... Um, giveaway that I have going on once we hit that 100 subscribers and that is very exciting so I'm just gonna get that out of the way first before I forget about it. Um, you'll have to excuse me while I'm reading my notes here I just want to make sure I am not forgetting anything. So the 100 subscriber giveaway, so exciting. The giveaway prize is one Just a Dose of Love pattern of the winner's choice, two skeins of yarn by a Canadian dyer, winner's choice, um, so once we know who that winner is, just let me know um, who your Canadian dyer of choice is and the uh, colorway that, or colorways, you can choose two, um, of your choice and as long as I can get them, they're in stock, that sort of thing, um, not a problem at all, that is spectacular. And one yarn themed pin of my choice. So that'll be a surprise. <laughs> and to enter, most of this is going on on Instagram because it's very difficult to tell who is subscribed to the channel from YouTube, unfortunately. But what you want to do is comment your favorite indie dyer. And since we're on YouTube and this is a YouTube giveaway, um, feel free to comment down below and subscribe to the Knit and Kitten channel. If you would like an additional entry, go on to the Instagram posts. Uh, you just wanna comment your favorite indie dyer on one of those photos, and that will get you entered into the draw as well, and uh, favorite the Instagram account, of course. And the winner will be drawn at random on the next podcast after we hit 100. So that will likely be in two weeks very exciting. So if you have not entered this already, please drop your comment down below. Um, subscribe if you are not to get entered into that. And if you would like to hop on over to Instagram there, I'll put a link down below for that as well, just in case you don't have that. And uh, feel free to enter there as well. Okay, perfect. Now that that is out of the way, I'm going to jump into what is on my needles. So the very first project I'm going to show you is the Brick Sweater. It's by Claire Lee. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, and it's not the one that you think it is. I started another one. This one's for me this time, though. And it was with some of the yarn I had bought with my birthday gift certificate to the Fiber Nook, which is one of my local yarn shops. And with this beautiful, beautiful, deep berry colorway. So this is Cascade Yarns. It is their Anthem Base, and it is color number 65, which is also known as Deep Berry. It is slightly less, um, it's a little bit darker. It's a little bit darker than it's showing up in the camera here. It's more like mm, this like this shade, but this color, if that makes sense. So it's a little bit darker than it shows up on the camera and it's 100% acrylic, but it is so squishy soft. And honestly, I think I might be sold on acrylic sweaters. Not quite as warm as the wool, but I don't have to worry about washing it. And honestly, I might just be sold because of that. So. 
without further ado, here is the progress that I have made so far. Yeah, look at that. I bet you didn't expect that. That's a ton of progress. I actually, last night, officially am now ready to start the ribbing for the bottom of the sweater. There should be 30 rows of um, one by one ribbing. And then I can hop onto the sleeves. I am so excited for this sweater. So let me just show you a little, oh yeah, I'm very excited. I made a sweater in this size, but a different color. Originally for my mother for Christmas, it turned out a little bit bigger than I was planning. So now it's for my sister and I'm making my mom another one. But the one that was, well, the other one that I made, the one that is now for my sister, um, fits me very well. So I know that this is going to also fit me very well because I'm making the same size <laughs> with the same needles. So here it is. Ah! So excited. The only thing is I, uh, there is only four balls of this yarn. So I bought all four and the other sweater took me just over 400 grams of yarn so i don't think i'm gonna have enough for the sweater and they are still sold out of this color i went on to the website for the fiber nook um and it must have been right after they had restocked because they had like all of the colors i'm like oh my god there's so many colors okay i'll come back to this and then i came back to it and the deep fairy was sold out again <laughs> so I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that because I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this sweater until I can get more yarn. Darn. And if I if I really um, got my button gear on getting this sweater done, I'm sure I could have it finished by next podcast. Easy peasy. That's just like two weekends of working on it, and that would be that would be. Um, that would be done the ribbing, that would be past islands and islands and fields and fields of stockinette sleeves, and it would be done, and I would have the most cozy sweater ever in this beautiful color. So maybe I'll have to look and see if I can find it anywhere else, or give them a call and see when they're gonna get some more in. Okay, so that was, this is, yeah, very exciting. I am so stoked for this sweater. And honestly, guys, I didn't ever think I was going to be a sweater knitter. They just take so freaking long. And my first one, the ease sweater that I made, probably took me over a year. It took a long time. It took a long time. Mind you, I was also working on like several shawls that year as well, but I have finished so many sweaters this year. This will be number four. Ah, I'm so pleased. Okay, getting distracted. Back to what's on my needles. Project number two. I started on a sock. <laughs> and not just any sock. Um, it is with the unique sock self-striping yarn. So it is pre-balled, you can see there. Oh, that's not showing me so great. So here it is. It is pre-balled um, into little 50 gram balls. And this is, this is Earth, by the way. Since I have this other image, we'll just show you. This is color number 64. I really hate numbered colors. Like, great if it has a name too, but just like, just like a number, you have no idea if you're re- uh, mm -hmm, eh. Anyways, started a sock. Started a long sock. Because if you know anything about the previous self-striping socks that I have been making this year, I have just been using the full 100 grams to to knit them up with contrasting heels and toes, which makes for a long sock. So I have kind of dubbed them my Dramarama socks because they are so dramatically long. And when you put them on like 
the model foot that I have or sock blockers. They don't fit at all. They are just so dramatically wrong. <laughs> so I have dubbed them the Dramarama socks. There's nothing special about them. They're just long, long, long stockinette socks. Let me just look at you a little close up. I. I am so impressed every single time I'm using the Unique Sock colorways with the beautiful transitions. Like, just look at that. So pretty. And this one is for my sister. This finished pair will be for my sister. Uh, oh good, I did not drop a stitch. And I'm about ready to put the toes, I, I am ready to put the toes in. This is how much I have left of my 50 gram ball. So I'm ready to put in the toes and heels and I'm going to use my leftover Lillian Pine yarn. Um, I'm skipping around a little bit here but I just want to show you the yarn, this pink, because I think it's going to go really nice with the blue. So hmm. Blue sock, pink heels and toes, and this is, what is the colorway? It's the peach pit on her daylily sock base, so that's what it is. It's got all these peachy colors, a little bit of yellow, um, a couple more orange bits, and the like splats, splats speckles of brown and some black there. Very much like the peach pit, very aptly named. So that is project number two. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. This is a little bit of a, a, a palette cleanser. Not really. It was just something to keep my hands busy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, uh, what am I drinking today? Today, I am drinking some eggnog. It is not homemade, but once I'm done this carton, I'm going to try my hand at making some, some eggnog. For the first time ever, might I add. I hope it turns out. Mm -hmm. So lovely. And in my eggnog, <clears throat> I do have some salted caramel flavored moonshine by the Krabby Goat, which is a fairly local to where I grew up, small town um, moonshine distillery. So I think that's super cool. This is, where are they located? I think it's Valley View. It is Valley View. So yeah, it's um, like one small town, well, one major small town over from where I live, where I grew up. It's about an hour drive. So it's halfway between High Prairie where I grew up and Grand Prairie, which is the closest city, small city. So super neat. This was a birthday gift to me from my friend Max who also grew up in High Prairie, so <laughs> I just, I, there are getting to be so many cute little like distillery, winery places in Alberta, and I am so excited about that. I just love, love local business, um, the fact that there is a winery uh, now just outside of High Prairie where I grew up. I think that is super cool. The moonshine obviously is spectacular. They have all of these really neat flavors. Um, yeah, it's just spectacular. I love it. And now that went on a little bit of tangent for that. My finished object. So I don't know if you saw it coming. I sure didn't see it coming. But I did finish the brick sweater that I had been working on for my mom. I, ooh, did I, did I weave in all my M's? No, you don't know that though. It's our secret. The ends are not all weaved in yet, but here it is. So I can't get it all in the picture frame here. That's most of it. 
This is the Brick Sweater, again, by Claire Lee. I love this sweater pattern, by the way. So easy, so simple, so cozy, and many, many sizes. And this is knitted up in the Bernard Premium Base. It is the teal colorway and it's 100% acrylic. So again, absolutely washable, would recommend if you are open to such an idea. And I knit this in slightly, slightly, actually quite a bit smaller needles than the pattern called for. I couldn't get gauge with the, the, the needles that it was calling for, which is not completely uncommon for me. I am apparently, uh, it's, I'm not a loose knitter. It, it's not loose, it's just bigger than gauge calls for, which is really frustrating for me actually. And you know, it matters with sweaters. So anyway, this is quite a bit smaller than the pattern called for. But also, I my mom's quite small, so I made her the extra small size in small needles. So this should fit her quite nicely. And it's gonna be super cozy too. So I followed the pattern. I followed the pattern almost exactly. The sleeves are a little shorter probably than the pattern called for but that's also because my gauge wasn't quite right so i just went for the words <laughs> i knit the sleeves as long as i knit the sleeves for my sweater because our arms are about the same length so this i know is going to fit her and i knit it the same length torso wise as my sweater because she did try that one on which is why I knew it was a little too big for her. Um, she did try it on, so I knew the length was good. So here it is, again. Yeah, I think it's just a really, really cute, cozy sweater. I hope this is like a, you know, lounging on the couch type sweater. And since I have that other one I made, my mom and my sister have matching sweaters, same color and everything. The, the sweater I made for my sister that I've been wearing around for the last couple weeks. <laughs> Shh, don't tell her. She might already know, but that's fine, it's fine. Okay, so here it is. Oh, yeah, I, oh, this is the third sweater I finished this year, which is crazy. Again, I, I made my Ease sweater, which is a little big, because, you know, gauge, the gauge problem. And that was the only sweater I'd made prior. And now suddenly three this year, almost four. Crazy, I love it. I, I'm really thinking this year, before the end of the year, I would like to try color work. So there's this amazingly talented knitter on Instagram, the Fussy Gusset, and I will put a link below. And she has the most amazing color work socks. I am in awe every time I see phone number photos. And her photos, by the way, are just like beautiful. They are so pleasing to look at aesthetically. The colors, it's all great. I, <laughs> she's got such talent, knitting and photography. She's got like just an eye for that detail. And I am so inspired by her posts to try color work. Probably not socks. I just, I have this thing about color work socks because my calves are um, larger than average, I think, for the size of my feet and the size of my, my calves are large for calves. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. But, ugh, I'm really, really iffy about color work socks because I think for the amount of stretch that I need for my calves the floats need to be way too long for it to be practical or you know to look good but again never tried color work so what do I know but I would like to try some mittens first yes. and I have enough scraps it's not scraps I have enough like 40 gram balls left over from socks that I think I can absolutely find the yarn for the mittens. Wish me luck. I, yes. 
but I'm so scared. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I just am. Hmm. Okay. All right. And that is all that is off my needles, which I mean, quantity wise is not a lot, but stitch count wise is huge, especially with the other sweater work I've done. I think anyways, in my humble opinion. I feel like I'm bragging today. Ooh, I don't like that. Mm. Okay. Upcoming items of note, the Through the Trees pattern, which is this, re-release has happened. So this, I actually have two ways to show you. This is the Through the Trees sock pattern. I published a couple years ago now. And I wanted to, I can't really see the pattern. No, not really. Maybe it'll be a little better if I move this over. Anyways, I wanted, to, I have been on a mission this year, not a very successful mission, slightly successful, to standardize all of my st stitch descriptions on my published patterns, starting with the older ones. So this is one of them. There, now that's a little better, you can see. So this is officially done. The standardized, uh, the stitch descriptions are all standardized now and instructions for like the Kitchener stitch and the afterthought heel and the toe and all of that has been standardized up to my current pattern writing. I don't think there's an end to that sentence. Yeah, I, up to the, the current way that I am writing my patterns. So that is all the same now. There wasn't actually a lot to change on this, but new photos now, which is, I like them. So that's, that is the other item of note that I had for today. And I completely forgot about the stash enhancement that I wanted to show you here. I thought this was the end of the podcast, but it's not. So Knit Picks had a sale going on. Uh, a couple weeks ago, when did I order this? The 9th, November 9th. So beginning of November, they had a huge sale and I used that as an opportunity to pick up more sweater quantities of yarn. Not that I need that, but that's okay. Now I can make more sweaters and I got it super cheap. So that's also very exciting. And I'm not gonna show you every single ball that I got. I only got <laughs> three different colors, but you know, sweater quantities of each. So the first one, let's grab this one here. Yeah. <clears throat> Knit Picks Brava. It is the Paprika colorway. It is a worsted weight and it is 100% premium acrylic yarn. And here it is. It is about that orange actually, slightly more muted maybe, but it is about that color. And I got a lot. I got six balls of this. I think it's gonna make me a very nice orange sweater. You can't really tell anymore um, because we are in my purple room, but I really do like the color orange. It is one of my favorite colors, if not my favorite color. And I'm going to have the most comfy orange sweater. Probably not going to be the brick sweater. I'm on the hunt for a new sweater pattern. I don't know what it's going to be yet. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to let me know. <laughs> um, it, it will have to be a you know single color because I have six balls of this color. But if you have any suggestions, please let me know either in the comments below or um, through Instagram or however you choose to do so. That is my first one. The second one, blah. I'm too, <laughs> my arms are too short to reach all the way down there. Also Brava, still orange. This is the persimmon, yes, persimmon colorway. So this is still 100% acrylic and I did get six balls of this as well. Now this one is a little less one color. The 
Paprika is very much just a singular color. This persimmon, though, you can see little bits of yellow tufts in there. So I think that is super cute. It's going to make a really nice, less in your face orange sweater. Again, if you have any suggestions for patterns, please let me know. I have a whole sweater quantity of this. Yeah, and I'm, I'm very excited. So there's that. Can you tell I was feeling very orange when I, <laughs> when I was on the website? Yeah. Okay, and the last one. Not Brava this time. It's Reverie, I believe, is how you say it, which is also knit picks. It is the Worsted Weight Orchard Red. And this is... 100% super fine alpaca. So it's more of like a. I don't think this is a mauve. This is more like a, a burgundy. These are 50 gram balls instead. So I got eight of them. So a little bit smaller quantity. It's only 400 grams of yarn. But it is so soft. So I wouldn't be able to make a sweater the same size as the brick sweater. I was thinking maybe one of those, uh, like a, a more fitted crop top. So less boxy, a little more fitted, but cropped and sweater. So if you have any suggestions for those as well, um, or any, any desires that you think I'd really love, or that you love and you want to share, please let me know. Here it is. Yeah, I I am so excited with all of these colors. Ah! There. Yeah. I just think they are all so, so pretty. I'm not going to be able to get a nice stacked image of all of these together. I just don't think... Oh, there we go. There. Yeah. I think they are all so pretty and I can't wait to knit with them. And Sasika also loves this box of yarn. I had opened it and then I left it on the floor in the kitchen after like closing it again. Um, I didn't tape it closed. I just did the like, you know, how you fold it so that the flaps aren't opening on the cardboard. Okay, so she still got in there and was using it as a bed because she thinks this is the coziest, coziest box ever, which it is. <laughs> Also makes mom a little worried that the yarn is all gonna be the most knotted yarn bar box ever. Yeah, and that wouldn't be very fun. So she hasn't been allowed <laughs> in, in this box ever since, um, which makes her sad, makes me happy. But I also really, really need to get on getting my yarn storage solution figured out. I bought one of the two by four Ikea like cube shelves and was planning on putting most of my yarn in there, but the boxes that fit in those shelves have been sold out at Ikea since I got the shelf, which makes it a little problematic for, you know, storing things in there. So my yarn, yarn room, my craft room, which is basically my yarn room, is sitting in this half finished state of like cacophony um, and I hate it which sucks because I put so much work into this being my beautiful craft you know beautiful craft room but I can't really put anything away because I don't have the organizers for it and it's making it really really frustrating honestly yeah. Yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> that is actually it now. So I think that was all I really wanted to talk about. Uh, what's going on in the personal life? So personal life. Last week I spent all week in a safety course for my internal safety auditor certificate because we are course certified, which is a 
Government of Alberta, Province of Alberta um, safety certification that can be given to employers and that helps, uh, well, one, there is a rebate on WCB premiums, I believe, um, for core certified companies, but also we now are able to, well, since we have core, we've had core for a long time, but since we have core, we're able to place bids on a lot of government work where we wouldn't be able to if we were not core certified. But in order to keep your core certification, you need to do an audit every year. So in a three year cycle, the first one needs to be done by an external auditor and the next two can be done by an internal auditor, which can be an employee of the company, which is me because I am our health and safety officer. And I found out a couple days ago, I passed my course with 91%. So I now can register us for the internal audit that I'll be doing this year before the end of the month. And yeah, that's very exciting. So that was, that was uh, a huge chunk of my week last week. I was in class basically from nine to three every day and there was an exam at the end, but it, I passed and I was so worried about it. I don't test very well. I always get really nervous and like second guess basically everything that I think I know, but it's okay. It all worked out. It was great. And now I can do our audit and then that'll be all done for the year. And hopefully I will, you know, do the audit next year before December because it's due on December 31st and it takes a lot of time so that'll be fun um, but I'm sure it's gonna be fine that didn't sound very very confident it will be fine I do know where everything is and since COVID is going on a lot of the two two portions of the audit out of three are not happening because COVID and site visits mm -mm, and COVID and staff interviews Mm -mm. So it's documentation only, which is going to cut out a huge chunk of time that would normally be spent. So that's really great. That is actually great. Very excited about that. Yeah. Okay. That is it. That's it. I'm going to cut it here. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Please, if you have not entered the giveaway yet for the 100 subscriber giveaway, do so. I would love to spread some of the talent around from Canadian Dyers. I love to support local when I can. Um, and there are just so many amazing dyers out there, everywhere of course, but I do want to um, support Canadian Dyers because I, I am Canadian. And there's just so much talent. I am blown away by the amount of talented people in my city, never, never mind in, in the entire country. It's, it's incredible. So if you haven't entered that, please enter that. If you don't know what Canadian Diary you like, I am sure that I can come up with some suggestions for you if you are the winner. Um, and thanks for spending some time with me. I hope you have an absolutely spectacular next couple of weeks. If I don't see you before Christmas, have an amazing Christmas, however you choose to celebrate this year. Of course, it's going to be a little bit weird probably for most of us, but however you decide to spend your Christmas, I hope you are safe and happy and healthy, and I will see you soon.